My name is Edward Bloom. I'm a visiting fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and the founder and director of the Project on Fair Representation. Well, because I'm not a lawyer, um, I, I am blessed with the acquaintance of a great many very smart, um, well-experienced lawyers from coast to coast, not just here within the sort of the Washington DC Supreme Court bar, but all over. And I have made a complete nudge of myself uh, among, among those folks. Fortunately, they will still take my calls and they will still answer my emails. Uh, that community of lawyers really is the most important thing I have going for me. In terms of what I do outside of those lawyers, how I think of a case, I have learned that when I identify an area of the law, whether it's education or voting, I have the luxury of starting with what I want the Supreme Court opinion to read and then working backwards to the district court. Most lawyers don't have that, um, don't have that latitude. They don't have that, um, uh, they're, they're, I think for the most part, restrained uh, uh, in, in thinking that way. So I think of what I want that opinion to read. I think of what uh, uh, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals might say about a case, then I think about what a district judge in the Eighth Circuit might say about a case, and I kind of work my way from that opinion to the circuit judge and see if I'm sort of on the right track. I take that theory and then run it by my, my buddies who often will disabuse me of whatever ideas I've come up with, but sometimes we hit upon something. Uh, and that, I think, really was sort of emblematic of the Northwest Austin Municipal Utility District versus Holder. I thought we should go immediately for striking down Section 4 and Section 5, whereas council, brilliant guys, said, let's put a chop on the log first. Let's give the court the opportunity to broaden this a little bit, avoid some constitutional decision of great importance. Let's let the court give Congress another shot at it. So that's how that case was framed. Really kind of framed over my objection, actually. But as it turned out, Northwest Austin was the first chop on the log that then led to Shelby County. So um, the, the process of beginning with what you want that opinion to read back to, the, back to the appellate court, back to the district court is sort of my model. I, I think it's enormously helpful um, and probably dispositive for me and what I'm trying to accomplish to have an appellate litigator, a Supreme Court appellate litigator at the district court working on the complaint. There has to be that kind of um, that kind of connection between that judge sitting in a in a in a in a chair in Austin, Texas, uh, with uh, the Chief Justice of the United States announcing the case. You. It, it's better to have that group of attorneys uh, with you the entire way, keeping their eye on what the ultimate goal is, and that is the Chief Justice announcing that case. I think the, the current project now, and a, a very important one for me, is to uh, apply the doctrine that the court handed us in Fisher to the higher education community at large. So to that end, um, I have uh, now targeted, much as I targeted the University of Texas back in 2002, 2003, 2004, I've now targeted three schools that I believe are not in compliance 
with the doctrine that the court gave us in Fisher. Those three schools are Harvard University, uh, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and the University of Wisconsin at Madison. It is my belief that for various reasons, uh, uh, those three schools are vulnerable to a legal challenge to their, uh, to their admissions policies. And it is my hope that just as I was able to recruit Abigail Fisher to sue UT, that uh, I will be able to recruit plaintiffs to sue those three schools and perhaps others. Um, it's, it's my belief that um, uh, a court uh, outside of the Supreme Court will look at the facts in each three of these schools and conclude that, um, that they are uh, out of compliance with the new strict scrutiny standard handed down by Fisher. Uh, and if we win at those levels, then I'm delighted. Um, I perhaps anticipate that those schools would then appeal to the United States Supreme Court, and we may have we may have additional we may have additional arguments on additional issues there. But it's my belief that those three schools, with litigation, can be decided rather narrowly. Well, I think there's a, an interesting uh, arc that we can discuss with the Fisher case. Um, as some may remember, Heman Sweat applied to the University of Texas School of Law in the 50s and was denied admission. Heman Sweat was a Houston area mail carrier who met all of the qualifications to attend the University of Texas School of Law. He was denied because of his because of his race. He wanted to attend the University of Texas uh, as just an applicant who met the qualifications. He didn't want his race to be used as a factor to harm him, obviously, but he didn't want his race to be used as a factor to help him either. He didn't want the bar raised and he didn't want the bar lowered. Abigail Fisher basically made the same argument. She did not want the bar raised for her because she was white. But she didn't want it lowered for her either. I think that that arc that connects Heman Sweat to Abigail Fisher is the founding principle of the civil rights movement. And for 40 years, that principle has evolved in ways that are hard to recognize from the time that my mother and father and so many advocated for desegregation in the 50s and 60s. So to the degree that I can provide cases that will continue to restore that original vision, then that's what I hope to do. Yes, I believe that um, the Supreme Court uh, has veered in directions it should not have veered uh, concerning race and ethnicity. But I think it has been a slow process uh, that the court has now started to recognize that slowly, carefully, judiciously, they're going to lead the law back to the point where an individual is judged uh, not by race and ethnicity. Uh, uh, but by factors out, outside of that.